I have no doubt that hardline creationists, if they even bothered watching my last two videos, will at this stage have dismissed me as the spawn of Satan, so I'm not too worried about them. But there are some creationists out there who think they can rescue Genesis. Now I've already explained why Genesis cannot be a metaphor or an allegorical tale representing what really happened in the past. But the cleverer people among, amongst them might think that they could maybe, just maybe, rescue the tale by referring to a person known in scientific circles as mitochondrial Eve. I will explain what that is. Okay, look at your line of descent, but only look at your maternal line. So look at your mother and her mother, your grandmother, and so on and so forth all the way in the past. This goes for women as well as for male. You see, your mitochondria are inherited solely from your mother. You do not inherit any of them from your father. So through the DNA in your mitochondria you can establish a line of descent down your female line. Now it has been pointed out by scientists that if you did this for all the people in the world you would end up at some point in the past with a single human female who, would we, who we could then label as mitochondrial Eve and in a real sense we are all descended from that one woman. So if you took Genesis allegorically, metaphorically, you could think that this might just rescue it as no matter how vaguely and how allegorically but at least something somewhat representative of reality. And I'm afraid that I'm going to have to burst that bubble as well because it's not going to work. You see, Genesis, Genesis starts with two people. Now first of all it starts with the creation of Adam and then from him Eve is created but let's even gloss that one over. So let's look at Genesis as uh, relating the story of Adam and Eve created more or less simultaneously. And therein lies the rub. You see, you can do the same thing following the, uh, the Y chromosome into the past, establishing a male line of descent. Now obviously females would have to go to their father and then take it from there, and males could look at their own Y chromosome and take it from there. And you could do a very similar thing finding a mitochondrial Adam, not a, a Y chromosome Adam, who would be the first male that all males have descended from. And here is the problem people. Mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosome Adam have nothing in common. They may have lived on different continents as far as we know and in completely different eras. There could be several generations between them. You see, obviously, as they're all human, their evolutionary trees of descent will, from a helicopter view, look almost identical. Very similar anyway. But the more you zoom in, the more differences you'll find. And as you go back through the past, you will find a Y chromosome Adam who may have lived in a different time and in a very different place from mitochondrial Eve. And of course these are only two lines of descent. Who says you have to go down the line of descent of only your female ancestors or only your male ancestors? What if you alternated the two or whatever? What if you started looking at the view from a single genes perspective? and where it was first shared or first 
passed on to all the humans down the line. That would be another Adam or Eve, the person who possessed that gene. And of course, don't forget, once again, my story about the circles, that when mitochondrial Eve or Y chromosome Adam or any of these other people were alive, they were obviously of the same species as all the other people around them. And they could do the same thing, extending their into their past and find yet another ancestor. So which one then is the so-called Adam or Eve? Is it that person or their distant ancestor? Even we could go back further in the past than mitochondrial Eve, for example, and realize that as we expand further into the past, there are other ancestors with those same mitochondrial DNA, but whose branches of descent have come to an end before we hit modern times. And they should by all rights also be included. And again, that extends the position of mitochondrial Eve, this mythical creature, even further into the past. All this shows, once again, is that there are no distinct points in the evolutionary tree. No moments in time in which special things happen. It just all gradually evolves over time and things slowly and imperceptibly drift along the evolutionary landscape. Genesis, as any sort of representation of reality, no matter how vaguely you take it, no matter how tolerant you are to its inaccuracies, cannot represent anything even remotely like reality. Genesis cannot be an accurate creation story, no matter how hard you try.